Welcome back to Sugar Mama TV. So I've had a lot of requests, um, I guess because I am a single mum, to do a video for single mums and how to manage your money and to how to, I guess, build financial security and freedom for yourself, you know, while being on a single income. And speaking from experience, I can be perfectly honest and say it's obviously a lot harder when you are on your own and there is just one person providing for the family, even if you do get some um, government assistance or you might get some spousal um, support from your ex-partner, but at the end of the day it is definitely can be quite challenging at the best of times. And that doesn't mean you're going to be um, you know, financially struggling for the rest of your life because you know, we're all capable of making some amazing changes for ourselves that can make such a huge difference in our financial future. So this video is all about um, me giving you my uh, top tips in the most simplest form so that you can start making some important changes in the way that you're managing your family's finances so that you can get ahead and build some security for yourself. So my first tip for you is to have a budget. So important. You need to know exactly how much it costs to maintain your family's lifestyle. How much it costs to put food on the table, how much it costs to pay all the utilities bills, how much it costs to pay for you know, medical and private health insurance, all those things really add up. And we really like to downplay in our head how much it actually costs to live. Um, but I can tell you, once you sit down and actually do a budget, it's quite a disturbing experience because you realise how quickly all those little things add up and we spend way much more than we actually realise. So if you haven't done a budget, I recommend going to my new website, sugarmama.tv, and subscribing. And if you subscribe, you get a complimentary budget emailed directly to you. So you can sit down and possibly have it with a cup of tea or even a glass of wine because it's quite a confronting experience when you add all those things up. And the Excel spreadsheet that I've designed for you is really easy to use. You, everything is, is pre-listed there so there aren't, there's nothing you can conveniently forget it's, um, and all you need to do is select the type of expense it is and how often that comes through and it tallies it up for you. The second reason you need to have a budget is it actually allows you to, to prepare for and plan for those expensive months. So for example last month my, um, all my car insurance came through, my rego, my CTP and my green slip. Um, very expensive, I was out of pocket about two and a half thousand dollars just like that. And because I knew that that was an expensive month, I was actually able to kind of stockpile my cash flow and prepare for that so that when those bills came through, it wasn't a nasty shock. I didn't clear out my cash account or my savings account. I was able to pay for those things up front and not have to worry about them. Another classic month that's really expensive um, is December because not only is it Christmas time, but often we've got lots of functions to go to. You know, we have to often have to you know turn up with some extra food, or we have like to entertain ourselves, maybe a new outfit, um, gifts for people. You know, um, wine and um, alcohol and food, um, maybe some transport, you know, it, babysitting expenses, and so forth. So. As a single parent, you definitely need to have a budget so that you know when those expensive months come and you know the cost of living. Another really, um, I guess, powerful benefit of having a budget is it actually allows you or gives you the information to realize how much money you can potentially save and how much money you can actually put aside um, for investing or even contributing to your superannuation account. Um, you know, when you do that budget and you realize how many things add up, you'll actually be able to look through each of those expenses and work out which ones you value and appreciate and need to stay there and which ones you can potentially forego so that you can increase your ability to save and invest for your future. My second tip for single parents is to have emergency savings. and. And if you've watched my other videos on how to manage your cash accounts, it is so important to have a life account. And this is essentially an account that you have where it has extra money set aside for things that just happen in life. So that might be um, you know, a medical expense, or it might be a prank on your car, or it might be you know, an emergency trip that you have to take overseas for a family matter. Whatever it might be, you always need to have some money set aside for those unexpected events so that when they do happen you've got cash set aside that you can rely on you don't need to lean on a credit card or borrow money from a friend or take out a personal loan you remain financially independent which is a really empowering um, I guess feeling to have and, and sense of security which is you know people really value once they have that 
but you it keeps you um, out of debt and it means you can you know you're not sort of chasing your tail by you know getting out of debt and then getting back in debt again have emergency money set aside so that if anything happens you've got peace of mind knowing you've got five ten fifteen thousand set aside an emergency account that you know your, you and your family can rely on in the worst possible situation that will get you through financially my third tip is to invest in your financial future once you've got your budget under control, you've got some emergency money set up, you can then start looking at investing for your financial future. Start building your financial knowledge of what, invest what investment options are available to you, what investments work for you and um, match your um, interest in, in risk, in your interest in investing and your you know, long-term financial goals. There are so many different investments out there. You might like managed funds, you might like shares, you might prefer something more conservative like you know, fixed interest investments and, and savings account. There is no right or wrong. Whatever is the most, whatever makes you feel comfortable and whatever you understand is the right thing for you. But do continue on building your financial knowledge and consider your long-term financial needs and your need to, to build up long-term passive income because that is the money that's going to help add more financial security for yourself, help increase your, your ability to earn money that doesn't actually require you to put in more effort and energy to make more money. So if you want to earn more money, you don't necessarily need to go and take out a second job. You can you know, build up long-term passive income streams, which is the focus of this channel and what I'm, I'm trying to show you how to create for yourself. So, you know, through my channel, you'll, you will obviously naturally increase your level of um, financial knowledge. I highly recommend Peter Thornhill's book, so make sure you watch my video on recommended reading, and I'll be doing more recommended reading as my channel continues to build up. But make sure you invest for your financial future, and even if it's you know ten dollars a week that you can, that's the only you can afford, only amount of money you can afford to put aside. That is better than nothing. Just make sure you actually do it, rather than just talk about it or think about it. You know, managing your money is a, is a, is a habit system. It's like cleaning your teeth. You know, you don't think about cleaning your teeth. You just automatically do it morning and night. When you get better at managing your money, it becomes you know, it becomes an automatic process. You will automatically put money aside you know, for your long-term investing, you will automatically regularly invest that money as it accumulates. My fourth tip is your superannuation. Being a single parent, um, you know, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be a single parent for the rest of your life, but if you are a single parent right now, you do need to realize that you, you know, you are only reliable on yourself at this stage. So you need to be putting money aside for your retirement goals. and. That means a couple of different things. One, it means having only one key superannuation account. Two, making sure that that superannuation money, which is your money, and is essentially your investment portfolio, uh, because superannuation is an investment portfolio, it's just locked, so you do need to pay attention. But that money should be invested for your long-term financial needs and your long-term financial goals. So make sure you have one superannuation account and it's invested in the right type of account and with the right type of mix of investments for your attitude towards investing and for your financial goals. You should also be looking in and learning about how much money you need to retire. So say for example you want to retire on $70,000 a year at age 60. You need to learn how much money you're going to have to have in superannuation and that might be say you know a million dollars. If you've got $40,000 in superannuation today, you need to learn um, how much money you should be contributing today through either yourself or through your employer so that by the, time that by the time you reach age 60, you've got that million dollars in that account and you know that you will have a realistic retirement and a comfortable retirement. Now, on the new Sugar Mama superannuation account, uh, sorry, on the new, on the new, now on the new Sugar Mama, now on the new, Sugar Mama website, I'm going to be adding special calculators for you where you can actually log in and enter in all your information. You can put in your age, how much money you've got in superannuation, how much your employer is con contributing, and you can actually look at situations. Well, what if I added $100 per week? Will I have that million dollars or should I have that million dollars in superannuation by the time I'm age 60? And you can play around with the numbers and and actually you realize what you're capable of achieving if you put your mind to it. And because you've done your budget, you'll know the limitations that you can work within. So you can actually start putting in the right actions and strategies in place today using these calculators. But your superannuation is, a, is 
one of the most important foundations of your financial wealth and your financial security. And if you're a single parent, you're going to be the one that pays for your retirement. So you really need to be taking an active role and contributing to that superannuation account. So make sure you, you know, do all the research for your super and make sure the money is invested properly and you are at least aware of how much money you need in super and how much you really should be contributing. And um, I'll be doing lots and lots of videos on superannuation, so don't worry if you've got questions. I'll be addressing them in, the, in more videos as I, um, as I start uploading them. But keep in mind, if you put money into superannuation, you cannot get it out until you meet a condition of release. So if you want to, say, put $10,000 in superannuation, um, you cannot get it out. You can't change your mind. Once that money is in there, the door is locked. You cannot get it out. And there are also limits as to how much money you can put into your superannuation per financial year. So at, as at today's date, which is the uh, 18th of October 2015, you can only put a maximum of $180,000 per financial year into your superannuation and through your employer can only put, or as a deductible contribution, a maximum of $30,000 today. So do not break those caps because if you do, you'll get hit with a, a penalty and it can be a rather expensive exercise. So if you're going to put money into superannuation, understand the rules and regulations that apply and understand that that money is, is trapped, but know that if you are putting money into superannuation, it's a very powerful um, uh, and honourable and responsible um, uh, strategy or step that you're taking for yourself that will help create more financial security and stability for yourself in the future. My final tip for single parents is to insure. When I say insure, I'm not talking about general insurance and home and contents and car insurance. Of course, that's really important. I'm talking about personal insurance. So there are four key types of personal insurance that I recommend that everyone um, have in place, um, particularly if you're a single parent, and I'll explain why in a second. But firstly, let me quickly explain the four different types. Number one is income protection, and that basically pays you um, a, a, an agreed amount of money, normally about 75% of what you currently earn, um, into a predetermined age, which I normally recommend is, should be about 65, so that if you cannot work due to a medical reason, and whether that be an accident or an illness, an insurance policy will pay you 75% of what you're earning or, or agreed amount until you can return back to work or until age 65. Now, as a single parent, this is so important because you're the one paying the bills. Um, if you can't work, what's going to happen? I know for myself, if I couldn't work because I got sick or I was in a really bad accident, there is no way I can still um, earn income. I would lose my house. I wouldn't be able to pay for, for food or um, any of the bills. Um, I would have to rely on the government through a um, disability benefit, which is minimal. Um, and I'd also have to rely on my family and friends to get by financially and I don't want to put that pressure or stress on anyone. So I have an income protection policy which I um, took out actually before I had Rocco. I've had it in place ever since I was about, I think about 23. But it is so important for single parents and as well as just actually everyone but more so single parents because you're the one that your ability to earn income and to keep your family operating together financially is so incredibly important. Without your ability to earn money, you would um, most people would fall apart financially. And if you want to remain, you know, uh, financially independent and create financial security for yourself, this is a really important um, consideration that you need to be making. So, um, number income protection is something you need to learn about and look at taking out for yourself. And generally speaking, the premiums are normally tax deductible. And I will do a, a separate video purely on insurance, but I just need to one, make you aware of it so you start researching and looking into income protection. Second is um, trauma insurance. So um, trauma insurance pays you again um, a lump sum amount of money um, if you were to suffer a major medical trauma. And that means something like cancer, um, a heart attack, um, any sort of major sickness or illness that, that might sort of potentially happen to you. And that money, um, that policy pays you a lump sum that you pre-agreed in, in, in an application process and been approved for. And that you use that to help pay for any sort of recovery and rehabilitation or any lifestyle adjustments that you might need to make if you did get sick. Now, again, um, for myself, I have had a trauma policy in place for many, many years and I'm insured for a certain amount of money. And if, I, if anything 
disasters happen to me and I did suffer a med major medical trauma, that money will help, you know, clear some of my mortgage for me, um, take a lot of financial pressure and stress off myself and give me some money that I can use to help focus on recovering and getting better. You know, for example, I might, if I got sick, I might want to do, you know, have some treatment overseas that's not covered under our Medicare system or, you know, I want, might want to consider some sort of alternative therapy that's quite expensive that, you know, I wouldn't normally be able to afford normally. So having this lump sum amount of money takes off the financial press, pressure and stress um, and um, allows me to focus on getting better and, you know, recovering as quickly as possible. The third um, type of policy that's so important to have uh, for everyone, but again, you know, if you're a single parent, you are, you know, solely, re you know, responsible for the financial well-being of your family is um, TPD, which stands for Total and Permanent Disablement. So again, if I was to be in a, in a major accident or suffer a major illness that left me disabled and unable to sort of function uh, without any sort of medical assistance, say, for example, through a nurse, Again, a lump sum amount of money would be paid to me, which would um, ideally, you know, cover my mortgage, um, or it covers more than my mortgage for my personal policy, but it means I don't need to worry about um, paying a mortgage anymore, my financial um, stresses are, are taken away or alleviated, and I can again focus on, um, freeze up my cash flow to focus on, you know, recovery and rehabilitation again, and um, I guess fo you know, focusing on, on getting better and keeping my, fi you know, keeping my family protected from financial stress as well. The fourth and final insurance that I want to talk to you about is probably the most depressing one of them all, but really important, whether you're a single parent or not actually, but it's life insurance. If you were to die, what would happen to you financially? What would happen to your family financially? Would they be left with a, a, a mortgage to look to pay for? Um, would they be left with, um, you know, credit card debts, with car loans, um, investment loans, you know, mortgages? Um, no, you don't want to leave that type of financial stress to your family. You really need to insure those, um, those, insure yourself from a life perspective so that if anything happens to you and you were to die, whether it be again through an accident or an illness, there's a lump sum amount of money that can be paid to, to your estate to pay out all those types of loans so that your, your assets are passed unencumbered, which means with no loans or debts attached and that you, you pass on some financial security and stability to your beneficiaries through your will. I know my two and a half year old could definitely not service um, my mortgage, so I have um, I have a life insurance policy in place, and that covers um, it covers all my all my debt, my home loan, my investment loans, um, absolutely everything. So that you know anything happens to me, Rocco is always going to be um, financially secure and stable for as long as possible, and um, it is it is really important because if you're a single parent. You know, your children are relying solely on you for, you know, obviously a whole range of different types of stability, but financial stability is a key factor in that. So if you're a single parent, you really need to be looking into having some sort of form of life insurance in place as well. Now, you can actually take out life and TPD cover through your superannuation, which means the premiums can be paid through super. But, um, so if your cash flow is tight, that is definitely an option available to you, but there are some limitations in doing that. Now, I'm going to be doing a, a couple of videos on insurance, so don't worry that if you have any questions, I'll be addressing those in future videos. But this video, I just really want to make you aware of, if you're a single parent, it's not disastrous, you're not financially, um, there's no financial doom and gloom for you. Um, it's just more responsibility that sits on your shoulders, which means you really need to step up and take the right actions and, and the right positive habit system in place today to start creating long-term financial security and freedom for yourself because, as I said before, only you are responsible for the outcome that you're creating for yourself. And I know in my situation being a single parent, um, I really believe in, in leading um, by example and I want Rocco to look at me as his as his mother and, and know that you know through watching my mother's own actions you know she has created financial stability for for us and um, and he's you know witnessing and, and building his own financial knowledge and education so in summary make sure you have a budget so important you make you can get a complimentary one through subscribing to my website sugar mama TV um, have emergency money savings in place so that you never need to rely on, on debt on credit cards and personal loans and loans from family and friends. 
Three, start investing for your long-term financial future. You know, you as you um, as you continue to to watch and subscribe to this channel, your knowledge is going to be constantly building and growing over time. You'll start making really powerful, you know, um, and educated uh, and informed decisions for yourself financially. Fourth thing, your superannuation. Um, understanding where your superannuation money is, how much money you need to have in super and what you need to be doing to make sure you get there in time. And then fifth, what I ended up with was that insurance, having that insurance policy in place so that you've got um, peace of mind knowing that in the worst possible situation, you're not going to be kicked down on the streets as a family, you will still survive financially um, to, to the best of your ability. So look, I hope um, you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope that I've encouraged and inspired you to, you know, that just because you're a single parent doesn't mean you can't do certain things. That's not the case at all. Yes, it might be hard. I'm definitely not sweeping that under the mat. But um, small habits that you can slowly increase and change and improve over time have such a powerful impact on your long-term financial future. And I can tell you one thing for, for myself, you know, becoming a single parent, um, as stressful and as emotionally draining as that was, it was actually, you know, a very invigorating and empowering experience because you know, I am responsible um, and everything I'm creating for myself um, is something I'm doing off the back of my own actions that I'm taking today for myself and my family's benefit. So that's the end of this video. Please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm really trying to grow this channel so I can help as many people as possible around the world. I'll be doing covering more, um, uh, uh, you know, retirement planning stuff for different countries like the US and the UK with your 401k plans and pensions. So um, stay tuned. Um, I've got lots more interesting content coming out. I'm also going to be doing a lot more lifestyle because that's what you guys have been asking for. So I always like to make sure you know I'm listening all the time as to what you, you like and what you enjoy. Um, feel free to share any of my videos with your, with your family and friends. Um, it's important that you know we cr all create a better financial future for ourselves because it gives us, you know, more time. It gives us more choice. It gives us, um, you know, better uh, emotional health and well-being, and helps create a better world. So that's it for this. Make sure you subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram at sugarmama.tv, and I will see you shortly in my next video. But ciao for now. Bye.